evil sadistic lord of torment. Oh, tyrant, spare me of your tyranny. Is God a tyrant? Yes. Is God a sadist? Maybe. These questions are neither new nor raised only by atheists but by people from all walks of life, believers and unbelievers, from ages. If he is omnipotent, omniscient, and all-knowing, why should he make his creatures suffer? God's all-good characteristic does not sit well with suffering and evil. Atheists use evil and suffering as the social impact of religions to dismiss the necessity and relevance of the faith, hence the denial of God. Jean-Paul Sartre posits that, the creation of, an indifferent or malevolent universe challenges the concept of a benevolent God. Existentialism Galaxies smashing into each other. Most of the heavenly bodies are inhospitable. Galaxies disappear in black holes. Everything is spinning or running in its orbit. Nothing is at rest. Those seeking peace and tranquility in this world are deluding themselves because the creation of this universe is supposed to be a place of chaos and mayhem. The obvious question would be, if he is all-powerful and omnipotent, why did he not create a universe without chaos and mayhem? Why is he hiding from his creation? Why does he need to employ schematic tests and trials, and use Satan as a bogeyman to justify his decision? Is he not really all-knowing? Is he not able to control and be aware of the actions of his creation? Inflicted suffering is more painful than suffering due to one's own volition or mistake. Since God is immune to suffering, he most likely enjoys or gets a kick out of his creation's suffering, and if so, he must be a sadist. Who or what is God? People have different concepts of God. Hindus, polytheists, have a supreme God and thousands of demigods. Sufis also believe in one God but have fabricated a complete, perpetual hierarchy of God's occult operatives, Qutb, Ghos, Abdul, etc. Christians have split God into Father God, Son God, and Holy Spirit, Trinity. Muslims have a unique and elaborate concept of God derived from the Quranic verses. He is one, indivisible, not composite, immaterial, invisible asterisk one, supremely intelligent, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, without beginning or end, unimaginable, inconceivable, and unique. Asterisk 1 The justification for his invisibility is that things such as gravity, magnetic field, weak and strong forces, and many other things are observable but not visible even with highly sophisticated devices, so how can God, the most sublime and subtle, be visible? God, due to human limitations, becomes merely an inconceivable concept whose presence is experienced only through supreme intelligence, subtleness, design, and mathematical precision employed throughout the universe, affirmed through revelations, specifically the inimitable Quran. Use of fear to coerce obedience. All divine scriptures threaten man with terrifying days of judgment, accountability, and punishment in hell, arbitrarily forcing man to submit to God's dictates. Even the chosen prophets are not immune to it. On the other hand, the concept of human free will and God's mercy is propagated vehemently. Man, by nature, cannot love something unimaginable, invisible, and intangible, therefore, awe is the only way to elicit submission. For example, in Quran this is how fear is instilled, indirectly, in man, he then turned towards the sky, and it was smoke, and he said to it and the earth, come, willingly or unwillingly. They replied, we come willingly Q, 41 colon 11. In another example, instilling of fear is evident from this verse, and people became divided after knowledge had come to them, out of animosity between them. Had your Lord not already issued the decree to delay the settlement of the dispute, would have decided between them right away Q, 41 colon 14 An omniscient God knew that giving them knowledge would not deter them from transgression yet gave them respite, so that they can perpetuate in sins and then, apparently, justifiably be held accountable. It is schematic predestination and not free will. Fear is the bedrock of man's psychological disposition, it engenders all his actions, should it be an instinct to survive, kill, deceive, succeed, or reproduce. 
it is why God has rightly and invariably exploited it. To counter slash camouflage the often repeated threats there is an unceasing rhetoric of God as merciful, compassionate, and forgiving. He granted man free will, but then anyone using it and disobeying him would become liable for punishment. It seems unsavory, exposing the irreconcilability of the concepts of justice and mercy. Islam, however, has reconciled it by invoking his characteristic often forgiving and also that he will be merciful, on the day of judgment, to those who have an equal number of sins and good deeds by letting them enter the heavens. People of ARAF sitting on a high fence queue, 7 colon 46 47 The concept of his omnipotence implies that his forgiveness or mercy is not always contingent on apparent reasons so, he may forgive anyone. His will is an absolute determinant and the entry to the heavens is not exclusive to any religion, people, or even their good deeds soteriology, debunking the irreconcilability of the concept of just and merciful. Muslim scholars affirm that punishment is merely a threat until actualized, whereas reward is a firm promise that must be honored. Some antagonists of religion claim that it uses fear that creates anxiety. Yes, without a shred of doubt. However here is the crux of it. When a man gets coerced to submit to the will of another, a sense of remorse and vengeance develops. When the same man submits to the will of God, a sense of remorse and vengeance never develops because he is predisposed to submit to a powerful supreme being God therefore, he attains serenity and satisfaction. Now, here is the catch. If God forgives someone by exercising his omnipotence, he is reneging on his word of being just and not changing his ways asterisk too. To camouflage this anomaly and unceasing sufferings unleashed on people, he created bogeyman Satan to absorb the blame for his injustice and tyranny. Maybe it is why he proscribed sentient beings from questioning his actions. To overshadow these contradictions, he keeps repeating that no injustice will be done to anyone, even to the weight of mustard seed. Q. 24 colon 47. He created sentient beings at his own will without their consent. He could also have absolved them of infliction and suffering because he is omnipotent. No sufficient explanation is available for the inevitability of human suffering except the necessity of tests and trials for accountability in the hereafter. In this case, therefore, there are two possibilities. 1. He has to forgive all sentient beings. 2. He has to make the deviant suffer in hell imaginatively and then enter them into the heavens. It is my conjectured wishful thinking. The concept of his omnipotence and that God does not change his ways does not seem to be in harmony. If God does not change slash alter his ways, Q, 35 colon 43, then his omnipotence becomes useless, so can be said that God is bound slash restrained by his words and will. When people say Allah knows the best or there must be some good, reason, in something not having been achieved or granted by Allah it is an admission by man of his helplessness due to God's schematic control over the efficacy of his free will. Those who may insist on using free will admit that even a leeway or elbow room free will subsist in God's will. Because God cannot afford to create a self-sufficient mini-God to defy his will. In Islamic literature, it is known as Muhal. Asterisk 2 I think the usual translation of Allah does not change his ways, of creation, would be more befitting and logical as, Allah does not change his, sunnah, mode of giving verbal revelations to the prophets. Because in the beginning, there was no system of documentation slash writing available, and the mode of sunnah, verbal revelations, was prone to interpolation and getting lost over time. Later on, writing and documentation became possible, so they were also given the scriptures like Psalm, Torah, Bible, and Quran. The Prophet Sunnah is the practical manifestation of the scriptures. Allah knows the best. God is proud and selfish. God is selfish since he does what he wills because he neither changes his ways nor anyone can question him for his actions. He is the proudest entity sentient beings can ever conceive or conceptualize. In a hadith, Abu Huraira reported from the Prophet, Allah Almighty said, Grandeur is my cloak and pride is my garment. Whoever competes with me in one of these two, I will cast him into the hell fire. Source, 
Sunan A B I Do Wudi 4090. Grade, Sahih, Authentic, According to Al Arna Ut. Scientific developments, on the one hand, point to the presence of an intelligent designer, whereas, on the other hand, debunk the concept of free will as the consciousness occurs 30 seconds after the action taken. Moreover, actions are enactments or manifestations of already taken decisions elsewhere in the brain or beyond. The latest research and discoveries in science, especially microbiology and biocentrism vindicate the presence of an intelligent designer. Next Life Justice warrants the existence of the next life on logical ground, and its absoluteness can be confirmed only through revelation. Given the fact that this world is not an equitable place, the absence of the next life would dissipate the hope of ultimate justice, rendering powerful and opportunists as wise and weak and righteous as stupid, dying in a similar end. Do those who commit evil deeds simply think that we will make them equal in their life and after their death to those who believe and do good? How wrong is their judgment? Q. 45, 21 Those who believe are sure of the hereafter. Q. 2 colon 4 Christians fabricated a concept of blanket salvation from Jesus Christ's crucifixion adducing that he died for the sin of Adam, original sin thereby, absolved all Christians for their belief in him, regardless of their deeds. When we think of having been created without our will or consent and instilled with the propensity to sin by exercising our free will, the punishment for any sin would be unjustifiable despite the excuse of man endowed with the capacity to discern between wrong and right. God, therefore, must be constrained because of his unceasing rhetoric of being forgiving and merciful, to forgive all of his creations. This view seems to converge with the Christian view of blanket salvation though, for a different reason. Thank you for using Pano Preter Basic. The difference between the Muslims and Christians will be already forgiven due to the crucifixion of Jesus and to be forgiven, in the end, by merciful God. It also supports my contemplative stretch of the imagination that, in the end, everyone will get pardoned soteriology. Christianity, according to the New Testament, presumes Jesus Christ, exclusively, to be the Son of God or God's Son. Islam, as per Quran, declares all men to be God's vice-regent. Metaphorically, all men are children of God, Islam uplifts the entire progeny of Adam as God's vice-regent, whereas Christianity blasphemes by according exclusivity to Jesus as God in flesh. Split, or dual Godhood theory. People may have noticed that generally the wishes or prayers for small things slash issues get answered slash accepted often quickly, which is hard to come by for bigger things and issues. It gives rise to a weird idea of the existence of split godhood or duality of godhood, an omnipresent god, and of a, probably mightier than the first one known to humankind, hidden slash reclusive god, whose consent slash approval is necessary for bigger things and issues. Reclusive God is acting as an overseer and is seldom active. He might be managing a bigger universe, s, much advanced, housing advanced intelligent life, sometimes observed in our skies or intraterrestrial spheres as UAP, UFO, curiously investigating our universe. Maybe similar contemplation had become the catalyst for the emergence of Father God, Son God, and hierarchical polytheism. In Hinduism and Zoroastrianism, several gods are responsible for performing different tasks, such as Ahura Mazda battles against the evil spirit Angra Mainyu, Araman. In Hinduism, hierarchical polytheism is more elaborate and pronounced. Here are some potential reasons why God is perceived to be evil or a sadist. Adam and Eve, deceived by Satan, disobeyed and sinned. Which continues in the world. Continuation of sin is Christianity doctrine, Adam was pardoned, granted prophethood, and appointed as God's first vice-regent. The propensity to sin inherent in human nature is much stronger than doing good. It renders the majority of people destined for hell. Most of the prophets were ordained to wage war against the disbelievers and transgressors at the behest of God as a modicum of punishment in the next world. 
the interpretation of the Old Testament's specific texts and historical developments gave rise to the concept of a vengeful or sadist God. Later, Quranic verses were also misconstrued, that particular verses ordained the waging of jihad, and violence got unleashed against non-Muslims in the zeal of establishing God's rule Islam augmenting the perception of God as vengeful or sadist. The fabrication of godless Buddhism was in defiance of human suffering, solidifying the perception of a sadist God. Muslims usually refrain from espousing or expressing any such ideas as it is tantamount to blasphemy. Theology apologists always offer different, seemingly convincing, but often flimsy arguments by using human experiences that are not ascribable to God, arguments justifying human suffering and God's culpability. Note. Despite my harshly critical characterizations of God, I am a practicing Muslim to the core. The reason is my inability to thank him enough for what he blessed me with so, I feel obligated to humble myself and worship him with my utmost devotion. Comment slash like slash share slash follow and subscribe. Shakir Mumtaz. Author, thinker, analyst. Thank you for using Panopreter Basic.